All right. Uh, if you have only partial information about your neighbors, that will do for the moment. But before coming out to you, requesting you to speak for 30 seconds, obviously we'll do it on a sample basis. People like the idea of knowing each other more than doing something useful in the class. So I hope you have, you have made at least small notes on a piece of paper. Whenever, if you are picked up in the random sampling and you have to come here and introduce a member of the group, you should be able to do that. You can carry a piece of paper with you if you want to. But right now, we we'll stop this discussion and go over to the next matter. So I'll come back to the introductions later. Okay, as I mentioned, each one will have to give a talk for five minutes. All talks will be completed on Saturday in two classrooms, 201 and 202. There will be a three and a half hour morning session and three and a half hour afternoon session. However, every person will have to be present only during the presentation of all members of the group. So the number of students in a group, they vary between 9 and 17, for example. So some groups have to spend a bit longer, but the complete detailed schedule will be put up. The schedule will be followed absolutely in a military style. That means if the session has to begin, let us say at 10.20, then it will not begin at 10.21, it will begin at 10.20. Obviously, we will provide some buffer time for people to move out of the classroom and the new set of people to come in. Please note that the five minute talk is an upper limit. You can finish your talk in three minutes or four minutes if you so wish. However, you will not take a single second beyond five minutes, not a single second. So five minutes, at the end of five minutes, if you are midway through a sentence, you dead stop there at the half sentence, period. Do you, do you appreciate this? You may never have done that. That you, you are always permitted to at least complete the sentence. So I'll tell you an anecdote that happened in, the, in a conference in Zurich. A VLDB conference, an invited paper, and the presenter was a great known researcher. He had several slides. A German professor was in the chair. At the appointed time, the person started presenting. As he, the chairman had announced, five minutes or uh, ten minutes before the talk, he gave a bell. The, the person was supposed to speak at most for five more minutes. Remaining five minutes were for question answers. He continued to speak beyond five minutes. At the end of ten minutes, which was the end of the entire session, the chairman simply said, thank you, professor, the next speaker is so-and-so. Now, this professor, well-renowned researcher, presenting an invited paper, was obviously offended. He said, uh, uh, chairman, sir, I have just a few more slides left. And this German chairman smiled and says, you did not hear me, professor. I said, thank you very much. And the next speaker is so-and-so. Now, that is the respect that one has to give for schedule. For others, not for yourself, but for others. Is that okay? Five minutes, by the way, is a lot of time. If you think about it, you'll actually speak on a topic in three minutes or four minutes. There is an additional requirement. So no slides. Because slides means transition time is costly. No slides. You can use whiteboard. There'll be whiteboard and black markers, etc. There will be a transition time of exactly one minute provided in which the person walking out will have to clean the board. So you get 60 seconds to clean whatever you have written on the board and then you go to your next seat, your seat. Somebody else comes up. We are organizing such that there will be enough microphones that the next person is actually ready with the technology. The person can simply walk in and start talking. I won't be there unfortunately. I am in a faraway place called Agartala but our TAs and uh, other colleagues will be there. You have to submit a text file containing the name of the topic. So it should not be a PDF file. It should be a .txt file prepared using a notepad or any equivalent. Why text file? Because the text file can be automatically analyzed. Okay. I have shown, I will be showing a sample of such a text file now. 
but the exact format in which you have to write your text file and the naming convention for the file will be informed on the uh, Moodle today. This has to be submitted by tomorrow midnight. None of us are going to read that. But if the text file does not exist on the Moodle, you miss the chance to speak. Simple. And it must exit before, exist before 12 midnight. So please don't try to upload it at 11.55 and then say, oh, some problem happened with Moodle. Preferable to leave about 2-3 hours. Best bet is you mull over it. It won't take more than 10 minutes to write that page, but upload it as early as possible. In addition to making this presentation, you also have to assess others in the group who make the presentation. It's a very uh, useful practice to assess oneself. How do you assess oneself? This is an opportunity. Your five minutes presentation will be video recorded. It's a short presentation, but you will be able to see that presentation. You will be able to observe yourself. You will be able to listen to yourself. You will be able to see your own body language. You will be able to see how your coverage impacts the audience when you hear it yourself later. So all these recordings will be rendered and will be made available on the Moodle for all of you to see so that you can learn not only from yourself but from others. And as I mentioned, at the end of the course, we shall have a more formal presentation recorded. And if you do not find improvement in your own speaking abilities, then as I said, I should deserve a fail grade for not running the course talk. All right. Here is a sample. So you have to write your roll number. Obviously, this is a fictitious roll number. Uh, this actually is not completely fictitious. I mean, this was the, the year when I joined the master's program here. So 69 is real. The rest of it is concocted because those days we had only six digit roll numbers. So I've created a roll number to in tune with our groups and so on. So this Mr. Brijlal Chesumal Karam Chandani wants to speak on learner autonomy. So he gives the points. IIT Bombay offers complete freedom to a student. These are the points that he has listed. All amenities are provided. Ethos full of energy. Always someone in the lounge. So let me tell you a bit of a history about this student. His real name was one Mr. Pandey. But throughout the first semester, he spent time mostly playing either bridge or chess or carom. He was never seen in the academic area. He was seen in the lounge perpetually. And he was thrilled to find that there is always somebody in the lounge. So that is why he was actually named Brijlal Chesmal Karam Chandani. But this is the modified name that I have given. His only problem was the academics was too strict. Some teachers insisted on attendance, which he did not like. And the MTech program, Senate insisted on throwing out students if they do not have adequate, in modern terms, if you do not have adequate CPI, you get thrown out. So just to tell you the reality of those days, there were no grades then, there were absolute marks. Each paper was 100 marks. 20 marks, 20 marks were for two tests. And 60 marks were for the answer. In the internal two tests, if you scored less than 30% in any subject, you would be thrown out. You won't be able to appear for the final exam. If you score 30% somehow or more, 33%, whatever, then you are permitted to take the NSEM. But if you fail to get 50 marks out of total 100 in two subjects out of six that you are studying, you are thrown out again. If you fail in one subject, you are permitted a special re-exam of 100 marks. If you fail in that, you are again thrown out. The general rule was you are thrown out, occasionally you are retained. Now, that was the problem of my friend. So, that is why you will notice that while he starts with learner's autonomy, this is the kind of autonomy he has in mind. Why I have created this example is to illustrate that the name of the topic does not necessarily indicate completely the intention of what material the speaker wishes to cover. The actual points to be covered will be completely dependent upon that person's own context. It will not necessarily be relevant to the context that you might create in your mind from what the title explains. But in this particular case, you have complete freedom. You decide on a topic. You decide on the points. But you have to submit such a text file 
in some appropriate format with a file name convention strictly followed the purpose is obviously that all these files can be automatically categorized and the content of the file can be automatically assessed or further categorized using a simple thing like awk for example so if your text lines are appropriately formatted is that okay now there was one student who had a problem on the schedule on saturday is that person here yeah so he had come to me and i had said that we will schedule his recording on either friday evening or monday sometime are there any other students who have an emergency uh, outage on saturday ah 1 2 3 my god more and more people are coming up okay can you share the emergency that you did not have emergency at the beginning of this dialogue there is a hackathon on saturday 12 pm it starts at 12 pm here it's at night of bombay how many people what is your group 6a so if your recording is over before that much before that it is okay right you see you you are not required to be present throughout saturday you are required to be present for one and a half hour so i suppose that is okay then except for him who has to go out so as i suggested please send a mail to me he has already sent we'll excuse you and we'll have to decide on a specific time where we can conduct your recording it cannot be done 10 days later it should preferably be done on friday evening itself or it can be done on monday morning but such people who want to be excused from this engagement still have to make submission of their topic and the points that you want to make and in case for such people the recording session is going to be organized on friday evening then your time slot for uploading the text file will not be friday midnight it will be friday noon is that okay as of now there are two people who are not free on the entire saturday one or two people who have some engagements if uh, your slot because the time table at the time when we formulate the time slots we may not remember exactly this in case your group comes at that time slot then you can see uh, you can act actually speak at the beginning and you will have freedom to go away without assessing others or you may be permitted to join some other group uh, my ts will take a call on that uh, yeah, for exception all right now we come back to the brief introduction 30 second introduction i'll randomly pick up someone who should stand up at the place and introduce the neighbor his name is siddarth he is from from lucknow he has just joined the phd program uh, i haven't had much time talking to him but i assume he likes playing cricket I'm going to introduce Jayesh. He's my classmate, and he's from Maharashtra. He did his uh, B Tech in Mumbai. Um, his interests: he likes music, and then um, he's good programmer. You wish to get all your programming assignments done by him, or what? Uh, as long as you are not caught, everything is allowed. They are heavily discussing amongst themselves. So already, you know everything. So I will ask. His name is uh, Guru Kanwal Singh, and he's from Chandigarh. And uh, his areas of interest are uh, wireless networks, cryptography, and uh, kernel programming. And he does not have any girlfriends. Uh, he plays badminton. Because you don't have any girlfriends, is that the main motivation to uh, uh, register for this course? No, not necessarily. <laughs> One of the motivations. I'll be introducing Ajita Shikhat. Uh, she's my classmate as well as my floor mate. Uh, she has done her engineering from Government Engineering College, Bharatpur, and she hails from Bharatpur, Rajasthan. Uh, she's done her primary education from Dosa, and then she uh, did her class five onwards from Bharatpur. That's when she's shifted to Bharatpur. Her hobbies are sleeping, listening to music, and traveling. <laughs> I like people have a hobby of sleeping. I love sleeping too, but unfortunately, I don't get time to sleep. Let's go behind. The backbenchers are sitting quietly, so let me capture some black backbenchers here. Uh, I'm going to introduce Diptesh. Uh, he is a first-year PhD student here. He just joined our institute 
uh, in this sem uh, he is originally from up he did his uh, uh, masters from up uh, technological university and i hope to connect with him very well i would like to just mention that as you go ahead and mingle with your group members uh, try to find out some more specific for example he introduced the friend as coming from up if you can pictureize the map of india and the map of up it's rather a large place isn't it with how many crore people nobody knows the population of uttar pradesh you come from up what is the population of up close to 20 crores so our friend while introducing him has generalized him to be a part of 20 crore people had he said for example that the person is from alabad or from banaras or from meerut it would have been pointed to a location more close the second thing he mentioned is he studied his btech in uttar pradesh technical university it had more than 800 colleges under it so it again does not tell you anything more specific about the person i am pointing this out that we often are satisfied with the generalities whereas when it comes to people knowing people it is useful to know as many particular details as possible so that both of you can relate to each other in a better fashion all right so i already consumed much of the time for today's session just to conclude all of you have to make a 5 minute presentation and record it and then assess others who make that presentation the assessment format you don't have to write essays by the way i mean if the person is speaking for 5 minutes you would like to listen to that person for 5 minutes so the assessment cannot take more than 30 seconds after the person has finished talking and there will be specific parameters listed they will be put up on the moodle so that you can see what those parameters are and you will have to actually just tick you don't have to you don't have to write anything but that means everybody has to have a working fountain pen or a ink pen or a ball pen or a pencil at least wo zara pen dena aisa nahi bolne ka udar you should have your own uh, all right so with this uh, let me ask you whether you have been able to see the uh, video that was uploaded yesterday all of you anybody who did not have time to see can you raise your hands this is an amazing class The whole class comes in time. The whole class watches videos. Is there something wrong with you? <laughs> very good. I am very proud of you. In fact, I have told all my colleagues in a faculty meeting yesterday, and I'll be informing the dean and the director of this extraordinary coherence in this class. Keep it that way. If you can sustain it throughout the semester, we'll have a treat for all of you. On second thoughts, I will seek my wife's permission to spend that kind of money. but in the past she has been permitting me so that's not a problem all right so if you have seen that proof editing is an absolutely important step in the days when you construct your documents online you'll be using some word processing software or the other now how many of you routinely look back at a document to check errors can you raise your hands 1 2 3 4 5 many okay but online you cannot mark the errors you can at most correct those errors as you notice them or you have to note down those errors somewhere else and then correct right you cannot mark those errors normal however the corrections can be marked by keeping what we know what we call tracking on so that whenever you edit you cut out something you insert something the tracking will be shown the the tracker will show what modifications you have done how many of you routinely keep the tracking on while editing a document that's a harder question most of us don't do that even if we are using a word processor we depend upon the word processor's inbuilt dictionary to suggest grammatical errors and spelling errors and wherever there is a red underline somewhere we quickly go and correct that so in effect we are dependent completely on the word processor software to point out our errors and the word processor itself to correct our errors because it it indicates what is the correct spelling and so on english is a bit of a funny language any language in fact has its own idiosyncrasies but english for example is spelt differently in 
in england and in united states indian english follows the british english rather than the american english and if you don't have the right dictionary you will get a whole lot of horrible errors which appear okay to you audio so you have to decide on what standard thing that you will follow english is also funny because there are several similar sounding words which have completely different meaning and sadly a wrong word might be right as far as grammar is concerned and spelling is concerned so the word processor will never be able to point out that this you agree i had uh, the occasion of uh, doing this in one of my own promotion interviews i had prepared a two page write up and gave it to the selection committee members and i was sitting in front and the great professor mahabala of iit madras who was a member he was looking at it and at certain point he suddenly said kick and showed it to his neighbor who is professor hari sastra putte from pune and i suddenly realized what was the mistake i had said in one sentence in my career something something except the career was spelled as carrier you know bicycle carrier and the word professor had said is perfectly correct english so notice the importance of identifying locating the error and marking the error traditionally when people had handwritten manuscripts and which the printer set on a printing machine sort of the first rushes they would be given to you and then you will have to proof edit them or proof read them so the small discussion that i presented on behalf of professor prakash vaidy is related to that we have decided that we will now work on pieces of software which will permit you to do such marking even on the screen we already have a software which permits us to do that on pdf files uh, professor uh, supratik introduced it to me many years ago there is a free version and there is a uh, uh, costly version which i actually purchased so all my students who submit pdf files as their reports i can actually use a stylus and do exactly this i don't do proof editing but i write my comments you can use that for proof editing but you require a device with a stylus because you have to mark something by hand there are utilities which are available where you can put your own comments on a pdf file but those comments are usually written in the margins and there is no clear way of indicating where exactly that comment relates to if it is about proof editing it is not easy all of you are computer science professionals i would request you to start thinking about it what kind of tools could be used to help you proof editing i am not talking about correct i am not talking about word processing proof editing like what was that means you should be able to mark online the mistakes that you look obviously the whole process is a iterative process you have been introduced to some symbols which professor prakash vaidy will start discussing today and he will have several sessions following this uh, but what is important is that these symbols have become standardized over what more than 100 years chicago manual of style which uh, probably is the first uh, glossary of all these symbols is almost 100 in 100 years old now some of the symbols have lost luster because they may not be any more valid since you don't do printing press kind of thing but many are still valid and some simple ones are absolutely mandatory for each one of us to know so that is what this whole session is about use of proof editing and then subsequently we'll also discuss use of punctuation marks and other things since we are going to follow the flip classroom concept hence for most of the assignments that you will have to submit will have to be done here and submitted here there won't be any home assignment the whole purpose is you discuss among yourselves work out prepare something and then make a submit many of these will be group submissions so we will follow a methodology which is called a think pair share methodology are you aware of this you have heard of this no in a think pair share methodology Uh, the class obviously has no lectures okay there are discussion sessions 
just like i went around asking somebody to talk etc we'll have such occasions but more importantly if a point is discussed and a problem is posed all members of a group attempt to solve that problem on individually on their own but after every individual has done it we ask them to share their paper with their neighbor so i have done this what have you done believe me there is a lot of learning to find out from what my neighbor has done even if that neighbor has made many mistakes when you explain those mistakes to your neighbor and convince the neighbor that these are wrong and when your neighbor does the same thing obviously there is more activity of the mind and learning is better in simple terms is called think pair and share this will be the so we are saying think not pair but group pair and share the idea is that we do not want to lose focus on every individual because at the end of the day each one of us has to become a better communicator but we will take advantage of the fact that we have so many neighbors and friends and their collective wisdom can be made available to me individually when i do this we will follow this mechanism in most of our activity all right thank you professor patak one was the theoretical part about proof editing <coughs> second was the actual symbols used then <coughs> we had one page giving you a para in three formats that is uncorrected form the corrected form corrected means proofread form with markings and third was including those corrections if you see on top this was actually from last year's batch in last year's batch we had assignments that everybody had to listen to one ted talk of their choice and then so it is listening skills then they had to write a short report on that so this was one of the reports we wanted to select something which had sufficient errors and we didn't have problem in fact there were many contenders we had to choose amongst them even the best report which was only one para had at least five errors and this one has many more you can see the fourth paragraph so if you see here you can see the proofread version in which half the errors are those of commands that is you have this with comma underneath and this is the general pattern that in any document you will find that half the errors are of those of commas almost nobody knows how to use commas correctly so we are going to have a special session for punctuation marks mainly comma the other punctuation marks are not very important for that also we have a chart made which will be uploading which you can study beforehand which gives examples and then in the class we will be doing only an exercise so this shows you what happens now for example professor hawking his words so in that p has to be capitalized because he is a specific professor if it is general professor you need not capitalize and hawking is a proper noun so h has to be capital all these things we have actually learnt in school capitalization rules but while typing <coughs> we tend to forget them then big bang big bang is the big bang it's not any big bang in the second last line so both b's are capitalized which you must have read the word universe previously used to be capitalized but the present convention is that it need not be capitalized previously english had lot of capitals but they are slowly vanishing and if you have read times of india they tried to make even the i that is first personal pronoun also small which is not permitted in english so the third part this is also this is the second para of the same submission we had just blanked out the corrections because we had a pdf file and given you as an exercise so how many errors could you find in the exercise anybody remembers no no how many number of errors not the individual errors 10 anybody else remembers how many errors you anyway you are close to the actual because there were 13 errors in that now our next assignment which will be taking up next time will be a one full page class assignment and that page you will get 15 or 20 minutes to correct that page then we will just take a poll of how many errors you have found then we will display the model solution explaining each error and since you have the sheet in front of you 
you can check that how the error is marked and why the error is there etc so that will give an idea of where we stand and how much we have to improve Where well, that is the yeah. dimension. If this small piece is missing, actually cut it. But it has to be replaced by something. So the replacement is written in the margin. Is written in the margin. Written is written in the margin. That is the convention. Yeah. Now, if you have read the theory part, the draft also always has to be double spaced. So, if it is double spaced, you mark it there itself, and you also mark it in the margin, so that you can count and check it. There are no, more. There are no more conventions. The same convention, but the application of the convention, as he says, is that ideally, if you have a double space printout, then you can mark the correction either above or below. Yes. But you are expected to also mark it in the margin. Margin. To the nearest point of that error. Yes. I mean, the left purpose right. is you can count. See, this counting errors is something which is considered a silly thing. It is not a silly thing. The number ten and the number thirteen. You have to reach as as many errors as you can find, and this number then reminds you whether you have corrected all thirteen or not. Because usually the correction appears in the modified document, and online it is more difficult because once you modify, the original version is gone unless you are versioning the document. Please understand that writing edited English correctly is actually mandatory in all professional communication. And the developed world always scoffs at us Indians that we are not careful about how we write. So Asian people generally have this problem. People who have great verbal traditions of knowledge, mm. but the Chinese, Asians, Koreans, when they write in English, there is a problem. Of it. As I said, many people claim that English is not their mother tongue. Therefore, they make the mistakes. Now, I am hundred percent sure that if you are writing bad English. They are also writing bad mother. Yeah. Uh, which one? The second last line. He has to create capital. Right. The last line. If I am repeating again two more times, the third, second, and the third letter, the last letter. Yeah. So the last line. Oh. The Big Bang. He has to create capital when the Big Bang appears for the first time, but not in the second. Second line. line. Yeah. The last line. For Big there was no before. What it says, there was nothing before. That first before has been is in inverted commas, and second before means before the Big Bang. No, the second one will not be capital. Saying before Big yeah, Bang. Yeah, no, he is right. It should be capital. It should be capital. Yeah. All of them should be capital. Why should Big Bang be capital? Because it's the Big Bang. The Big Bang. It's a uh, proper noun. It's a proper noun. It used to be. I also learned something. Big Bang is a proper noun. Hmm. I thought. Uh, I mean, uh, he introduced the subject with a Big Bang. Now yeah. that is not the that, universe. That is Big not Bang. the Big Bang. That is a different Big Bang. Yeah, right? yeah. No. this is the Big Bang. So when I use Big Bang in my general writing, I should not capitalize. No. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So about these symbols, we'll see some important things. Actually, we have edited this list. This list for longer because some of the symbols are not relevant. In operational science, there is move right, move left, flush left, flush right, etc. Now these things are done by word processor nowadays. So, if you do the setting properly, or even after composing the document, you can give these as commands, or centering also you can give a command. But still, you have to mark this. If if it has not been done, you still need the markings. Then the right hand typographical signs. In that, many of them refer to the font. For example, italics and Roman, and capitals and small, and small capitals. In Indian languages, there is no capital and small. So we are not really accustomed to this. And we have to learn this by convention, and we have to correct wherever it is applicable. And proof editors, uh, these uh, punctuation marks will be studying separately. Now I will tell you what are the references which we should use. So there is a low end reference. Has anybody heard of this book? You have used it in school, etc. So this 
If you have a copy, it's fine. Otherwise, you get a copy. It costs about 200 rupees. This is an old classic. It was originally written in British times around 1936. Ren and Martin were principals of some colleges. They have written this book. I have used it in my <coughs> school days. Firuza's mother has used it in her school days. Firuza has used it in her school days. It's an old classic. My grandson is using it in his school days. Yeah, <laughs> you see, yeah. So, Ren and Martin, you should acquire and go through. It's an entertaining book of those who have read it because it has many things. It has about poetry, about quotations, the Latin roots, Greek roots. There is a lot of entertaining material. So, if in doubt about anything about, about grammar, you can refer to this. And at the high end, Chicago Manual of Style. This is a publication of Chicago University Press. So they started it at about the start of last century. It's almost 100 years old. They did it for, since they were themselves having a press, they needed a guidebook about how to proof edit and how to publish. So when that was circulated, it became so popular that all others asked them, to publish it as a book. So they started publishing and then depending on language change and technology change, they keep on upgrading it. So when I got it, it was the 12th edition. When we got it here, this is the 16th edition. This is the current edition. So whatever we are telling you ah, over Why here. that book cost broken? This costs about 2000 rupees. 2000 rupees? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You so, have to be strong hearted to spend 2000 rupees of your scholarship, not scholarship, yeah. PA ship, sorry. No, luckily we have extracted important things out of that. So whatever handouts we are giving you contain enough material for you to get along. But all of it is traceable to Chicago when you have a love style. This is written like a law book that each paragraph has a number like act number this, clause number this. You can always refer by that clause and everybody will understand. Last thing just before I close because we have finished our time is how we have written the date. Does anybody write date like this? You do? Good. What is different from normal writing of date? Normally we write 0701 to 016. Now from mathematics, most significant digit should come first. So that order is scrambled because date is the least significant, then is month, then is this. Here, if you read then from most significant to least significant digits. This is the ISO standard, as the international standard. It is also the Indian standard. So, on closing, I will suggest that you might want to use this as a prefix to every file name. Because then, whenever you sort files, on just name, yeah. you'll automatically get them chronologically sorted. Yeah, and computer programs are designed to recognize this with hyphens as date. They will automatically treat it as date. Chicago Mandela style follows American English and Ren and Martin follows British English. So is there a confusion? Yeah, but there are very little difference. As far as grammar is concerned, maybe some spellings are different. Anything you as long as you are consistent, it's fine. Don't mix the styles. I'll close this session with a similar question that was asked in one of my exams uh, about three decades ago. Student was from chemical engineering. I had said that in case of difficulty, make reasonable assumptions and state them with justification. There shall be no dialogue between invigilators and the students. And yet one student raised his hand. So I said, read this. So he said, I have a question about that. And the question was, Sir, your definition of reasonableness may be different from my definition of reasonableness. So how do I make reasonable assumptions? And my answer was, you make assumptions as per your definition of reasonableness, I will assess them from my definition of reasonableness. Very unreasonable, right? That's how life is. Carry on. Thank you so much. <laughs>